We welcome in Joshua Perry, former Ohio State star, and now, of course, a BTN analyst. And Joshua, you have this interesting dichotomy here. You have some very high-profile players saying they don't want to play, presumably don't want to risk the potential harm that may come from contracting COVID-19. It includes some very high-profile players with obvious NFL futures. And then you have this widespread movement on Sunday, which also includes high-profile players with NFL futures saying we do want to play. You're not that far removed from this. Give us a sense of what you think is going through the minds of players as their season hangs in the balance here. Well, I, I think kind of the first thing we have to realize is how personal of a decision this is for the players to make. If you're a high-profile player and you're on a team for example, that you don't know if it's going to be in contention for a conference championship or a national championship at the end of the year, you do have a big decision to make in terms of how you want to take care of your body. On the flip side of that, you see Trevor Lawrence down in the South, Justin Fields up here in Big Ten land. These are kind of the guys who are leading this we want to play charge. These are guys that are in contention for the Heisman Trophy. They're guys that we all see as potential national championship contenders. So for them, uh, they want to be able to go out and, and, and leave their college career on a high note. But I think overall, the tone from players, whether it's on the West Coast with the Pac-12 movement, whether it's with the We Want to Play movement, we're seeing players now that are asking for a seat at the table. They want to be represented when conferences are having these conversations, when they're making decisions about protocols, when they're making decisions about what games are going to be played and when they're going to be played and how they're going to be played. Um, player safety decisions, all of that. So I think it's refreshing to see college players really using their voices right now and requesting that seat at a table because it's been a long time coming. Uh, you mentioned player safety, and those who are advocating to postpone the 2020 season are citing player safety as the biggest issue for them. You know, I spoke with someone who's been closely involved in these discussions throughout this entire process who told me that this myocarditis, I was talking about this with Pat Forty, which is a heart issue that has reared its head in the aftermath of people being diagnosed with COVID-19, that that has pushed them to a large extent over the edge, that there is an uncertainty as to how long this lasts, what the long-term implications of it are, and that they are looking at this as they are acting paternalistically, for lack of a better way to put it, and saying this is the way that we believe is this, to act that is in your best interest in terms of safety. So how do you balance that, Joshua, when you have players who are saying, give us a voice and let us have input into these health considerations and administrators who are saying, well, that's exactly what we're doing and that's what we're considering here. You know, it's it's interesting that you use that that term paternalistically because I think there is kind of that, you know, parent-child struggle going on where the athletes definitely want a seat at the table, but we have people who are decision makers that have to make sure that they're looking out for athletes. And the reality of the situation is that student athletes are not infectious disease doctors. And and, and the reality of the situation when it comes to those people is that they don't ask, they don't know what the long range repercussions of coronavirus are. And we're starting to learn and that information's developing. So for us, I think it's important to take that step back and realize that the, the caution is there from the doctors to focus on player safety right now and try to gather as much information as possible. Now, on the flip side of that, you can make the argument that if we postpone until spring, some of these same issues are going to remain. We might have just the same amount of information where we still don't know long range what happens. And then you hear kind of this argument, too, that keeping players on campus in the fall and having them play puts them in a better position for testing, puts them in a better position for treatment. And, and that is an argument as well for people that want to play right now. And I would push back on that as saying that when you get other students on campus, I think it becomes really, really hard to control behaviors and, and you have a, an increased risk for spread there. But you can go back and forth on either side of the coin when it comes to playing now uh, as, a, as a safety issue, uh, playing later as a safety issue, playing now could be better for the players or, or waiting could be better. You could slice it any of those ways. Yeah, and I've definitely heard that argument of you're better off being on campus because there's the testing protocols in place. And I don't think many would dispute that you're safer being on campus than you are going back to your hometown. I, I think that's almost self-evident. But the, it's really the issue isn't whether you're safer being on campus, right? The issue is, is it safe to play? Sure. And the person that I talked to said they have not found a single doctor who has told them it's safe to play. So... 
I mean, you could stay on campus and you could train with your team and you could get ready for a potential spring season and you could be in that testing protocol and all of those safety measures which are in place and which almost indisputably are better on a college campus than they would be in far-flung locations. You could still do that, Joshua. To what extent do you think players would be able to kind of keep their eye on the ball, no pun intended, and say, okay, we might not be having this season in the fall, but perhaps we'll have it you know, in the late winter or in the spring, how challenging would that be for a player to try to shift their focus while remaining on campus? And, you know, I actually do think that's the best solution is to keep these players on campus throughout the fall and the winter as they gear up for spring for all of the reasons you just said. But the challenge will be the fact that, you know, these guys' minds are probably going to be in other places at times. And, uh, you know, if there are other students on campus, there are going to be those temptations, especially knowing that they're not going to be playing a game. So they're going to have time to recover in theory if they were to contract the coronavirus. And they're not necessarily uh, risking any games immediately. Uh, but I, I, it's, it's such a weird scenario to, I guess, be talking about right now. Like, I'm trying to think of myself as a you know, 20 year old football player in this scenario. And my options were to train all spring and summer for a season in the fall. And now you're kicking that can down the road even further. Uh, Those guys probably do need a break at this point, just mentally to get their minds right. Uh, But keeping them on campus long range and and, and asking them to uh, attack this with intent and discipline and the right mindset that they're going to be able to compete in the spring, I think is the best way to go forward. National champion Joshua Perry, BTN analyst as well. Joshua, thanks so much for your insights. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hope to see you soon.